What's up, y'all? Prophet David Taylor here. Uh, again, sorry I'm not coming on live. Uh, still dealing with some internet stuff, but uh, uploading this video so you can check it out uh, because I do have a prophetic word I need to release. As always, you can catch me uh, when I get my internet stuff <laughs> back worked out, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Then on second Thursday, still trying to work all that stuff out, but don't worry, hasn't gone away. And then uh, if you want to donate to my ministry, there's a paypal.me link in my uh, uh, Periscope profile and then also on the Facebook uh, posts. And then also you can donate to my not-for-profit through Amazon Smile. And remember my tagline. My tagline is, God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. Let me say that one more time. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets, okay? So let's have a quick word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you thanking you for this time, thanking you for the Spirit of God. Thank you for you indwelling us and walking in us, O oh God, and us being made in your image and all the wonderful things that come along with that. I ask you to speak through my mouth, O oh God, help me to deliver what you've given me to say so that you might be glorified and the body of Christ might be edified. And we thank you for it, and we believe you for it right now, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so uh, the prophetic word today, you know, just like, you know, we had a word of prayer, but I also pray before I come on and ask the Holy Spirit. All right, so the prophetic word for today, you know, uh, we just had a word of prayer, but I always pray before I come on and ask the Holy Spirit, what is it that he wants me to deliver to the body of Christ? Because the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing. I'm not saying nothing. OK, because it's not me. That's why I always like to emphasize people that to prophesy means to speak by divinely inspired utterance. The spirit of God has to move you. OK, and that's where people get into trouble when they are just prophesying, when they're just making stuff up or pulling stuff out of their own imagination or a whole bunch of wrong things that people do, which is why people get in trouble with the prophetic. You've got to ask the spirit of God. You've got to ask the Holy Ghost. What is it that you want me to say, if anything, and then say what he tells you to say? That's how it works. Well, Prophet Taylor, how do we know if it's accurate? Scripture says that if it comes to pass, okay, test of a prophet is, does his word come to pass? If it doesn't come to pass, then the Lord said he's spoken presumptuously. He's presumed, okay? So that's why I always check and see what the Holy Ghost has to say before I open my mouth, because it's not my word. It's not me, okay? So the prophetic word for today was a strange word, but the Lord gave it to me, and the prophetic word for today was cash flow. That's right, it's cash flow. Now, I asked the Lord, what are you talking about, <laughs> okay? This isn't for everybody, but some of y'all, God is about to increase your cash flow. God is about to increase the stream of cash in your life, okay? Now, real soon, I'm going to do a series or a teaching on uh, spirituality and money about God and finances because there are quite a few people, and it's been around, I guess, you know, since forever, the idea that somehow that spirituality and finances are mutually exclusive, that you can't have God and money. That's particularly Western, that's particularly American, because everybody all over the world doesn't believe that, okay? That's, that's you know, uh, very much concentrated here in the West, you know, preachers are crooks, all preachers are crooks, church is a scam, Jesus isn't real. And my favorite one, Jesus Christ wasn't about money. Uh, or, or that Jesus was broke. And how would he be broke when kings from the east brought him treasures at two years old? How could the Lord be broke if he had enough power to pull food out of thin air to feed thousands of people? How could the Lord be broke if he could pull money out of a fish's mouth and pay off not only his tax bill, but Peter's too? How could the Lord be broke if um, he could raise people from the dead? He raised a child from the dead. What would you give? for your child to be brought back. I mean, there's just, it's really kind of ridiculous when you look at it from the scripture, but nevertheless, there will always be hardcore people, hardcore people that say that spirituality and finances 
are mutually exclusive, that you can't have God and money, or you can't be right with God and have money too. And I, I, I want you to notice that every single person that says that, that says that to Christians or about Christians or about Jesus, they're not giving away any of their money. They're just telling you, you ain't supposed to have none. Okay? If money's evil and money's wrong, they use money every day to live because you need money every day to live. But they're saying that it's wrong when Christians have it, or it's wrong when, when, when preachers have it, or it's wrong when Christians have too much of it. You know, I'm, so anyway, we're going to deal with it from Scripture. So I'm going to do a whole teaching on that. because. But stuff like that is always only for those that have ears to hear. Because I have discovered in my living that people are going to believe what they want to believe. Okay? And people don't understand that they are responsible before God for those choices. If God says something in his word, or God gives you a revelation, or God opens your eyes, or the Bible says you can even look at nature and see God, and you just shut your heart to it, you just shut your mind to it, you just reject it out of pocket, then one day, when you stand before your maker in judgment, you're going to have to answer. So that's why you hear me say all the time how important it is to have a strong foundation in the written word of God. That's the reason we have the Bible. So we could know beyond a shadow of a doubt what God thinks about any given subject. Think about it. Whatever subject we want to know God's thoughts on, that's why he gave us scriptures. So we could know this is what God thinks. So if God says something in the scripture and makes it clear to us what he thinks, and we reject it in lieu of what we think, then we're going to have to answer for that someday. So I don't expect everybody to, you know, receive or whatever, because that's the big deal with people. What we care about is money and relationships. Those are like the big deal, uh, at least in America. And those are the two areas where people determine whether or not you really save, <laughs> which is your finances and your relationships. Because if, if you're not, you know, holy enough or pious enough or broke enough or humble enough or whatever it is, you know, it's those two areas where people determine whether or not you really know God or, or whatever. And that's particularly America. That is not worldwide. There are some places in the world where the more kids and the more wives you had, it, it's a sign of blessing. It's a sign of fruitfulness. It's a sign of, of increase in abundance if you have a lot of wives and a lot of kids. And in some areas of the world, uh, they would never think to divorce their faith from their finances. Okay? Again, so it's here. <laughs> Here in the West, where uh, people will point to, and there are some wolves in sheep's clothing. I mean, it's not like there's absolutely no truth to the statement that some people have used religion to uh, hurt others financially. That is 100% true. That was true of Jesus' day. But that still doesn't mean, it's like the song says, you know, one bad apple. That still doesn't mean that God doesn't have anything to say about money and that there aren't uh, principles and scriptures that we're supposed to live by just so just because there are some abuses and remember when it comes to matters of faith that's one of the few areas where people kind of have an all or nothing approach I'm not saying that the people that name the claim, na uh, claim the name of Christ aren't supposed to live right that's not what I'm saying I'm saying that if you ever went to a bad dentist you don't disparage the whole profession of dentistry you just find yourself a better dentist. If you ever had a bad music teacher, but you still want to learn how to play an instrument, you might have had a bad experience or two, but if you really want to learn how to play your instrument, you'll keep searching until you find yourself and or your child a really good music teacher. Well, if you've had a bad experience in matters of faith, it doesn't mean that Jesus is phony and God isn't real and the entire kingdom of God doesn't exist in the Bible ain't true. It doesn't mean any of that stuff that people says, okay? Because there are people out here who are teaching truth and giving you principles from the kingdom of heaven that can absolutely change your life. So anyway, so like I said, the, the word for today, for those that have ears to hear it, and for those that it applies to, because it doesn't apply to everybody, and that's another mistake sometimes that's made with the prophetic. Every prophetic word that comes forth isn't necessarily for everybody. 
But for those that it is for, they'll have ears to hear it. And the Spirit of God will give you a witness on the inside when he's talking to you. And then sometimes God scatters the word abroad with a wide net to see how people are going to receive it. I know that one's a little too deep. I know sometimes that makes people angry because people are determined to blame God for everything, no matter what. But sometimes God opens his hand and gives a, an invitation and watches who responds. Okay? But for those that have ears to hear, for those that are willing to receive it, and for those that the uh, Spirit of God is giving you a witness, God is about to increase your cash flow. But what the Lord told me to say in no uncertain terms was, can you handle it? Can you handle it? Sometimes we ask God for more money. Sometimes we pray for money. Sometimes we sell. Sometimes we do a lot of things, but can you handle it? What would you do with it if you got it? That's the thing. Okay? And it's not just a matter of character. It's a matter of plans. What are your plans for the future? How do you plan to impact yourself, your family, the world? Do you think that way? Do you think about making an impact? Do you think about leaving a legacy? Do you think about making a real difference? Uh, how do you think? Why is that so important? Let's say you came into, let's say you make $30,000 a year, and let's say you came into $3 million. Let's say there was an old relative, an old rich uncle that left you a trust fund that you didn't know nothing about, and the lawyer calls you and tells you all of a sudden that you inherited $3 million. And it's real. It's not like the, you know, the Prince from Nigeria scams. Or let's say you uh, write a book or you come up with an idea. Let's say you pitch a TV show. Let's say you come up with something that revolutionizes your industry. And all of a sudden, you get this huge cash windfall. Now, you're used to making $30,000 a year. And all of a sudden, life dropped $3 million on you. Do you know what will happen? What will happen is if you haven't studied money, if you haven't grown in the area of your finances, if you haven't changed the way you think, then that $3 million is going to come back down to $30,000. One more time. That $3 million is going to come back down to $30,000. It really will, okay? Because you have to come up to that level in here and in here. And for those of you that don't know what money is, okay, in the natural, money's a resource, obviously. You don't, you know, have to speak in tongues for four hours to know that. But what is money in the spiritual? In the spiritual, money is a heart mirror. Money is a heart mirror. Can you back that up with scripture, Prophet Taylor? Yes, I can. The Lord says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Your heart is a reflection of your treasure, whatever you treasure or whatever you've invested in. And all you have to do to reveal the secrets of a person's heart is drop some money in the mix. It never fails, not one time. Not one time. If you ever want to know who someone really is, put some money in the mix. When money's on the table, the secrets of people's hearts come out. Never fails, not one time. Okay? So I want you to understand that uh, the most important thing for those of you that God does bless your financial increase, the most important thing for you to understand is that you need to know what to do with it. You need to know how to handle it. Whatever God does for you, you are going to need to come up to a new level of thinking here and here and a new level of vision. If you don't do that, then it won't matter how much God gives you. I know that people don't believe that. I know for sure that people don't believe that. I know what we believe with all of our hearts is, if I just had some more money, that would solve my problem. I know that's what we believe. Mm. I know that's what we believe. But that is, in fact, my brothers and sisters, not true. It is not true that if you just had some more money, your problems would be solved. What is true is that whatever money you have is going to uh, be adjusted to the way you think. So if you think on a $30,000 level 
and you get $3 million and you don't change the way you think, that $3 million is going to come back down to 30000 very, very quickly. Uh, the same thing kind of happens with uh, lottery winners. We see that all the time. The vast majority of people that hit the lottery, it ends up ruining their lives. Now, some people get handled because, once again, they know how to think. They knew what to do with money when they got it because of what was going on here and here. Because some people don't want an extravagant lifestyle. Some people, when they get more money, they just want to keep living like they're living. So they put some stuff up for the future because that's what was in their heart. See what I mean? So it doesn't matter what you think about the issue. Money is a heart mirror. It's going to show up what's, where your treasury is. That's where your heart is. It's going to show up. Okay, what's really in you. So you've got to be diligent, those of you that are about to get blessed on that financial level, you've got to be diligent to ensure that you bring your thinking and you, you examine your heart. You, you look at what God is trying to teach you. Uh, because again, it won't matter how much money you have if it, you, know, you don't change the way you think and, and change the way you see things on the inside. Because more money is not going to solve your problem. The, the scriptural principle is, he that is faithful in little is faithful in much. So what the Lord is saying there in no uncertain terms is that if you're good with $10, you can be good with $10,000. If you're good with $10, you can be good with $10 million. Because you know how to be faithful with the little that you have. But if you're not faithful with the little that you have, you're not going to be faithful with much. That's why more money is not going to solve your problem if you don't learn how to be faithful with the money you already have. I know we don't believe it. I know we don't believe it, but it's true. It's 100% true. If you don't know how to take $10 and divide it up and what $10 means and where that money is supposed to go, how much goes to God, how much goes to the government, how much goes for your expenses, how much you ought to save up. If you don't know what to do that in, 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 on that level, then it won't matter. If you times it, times 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or a million, it won't matter. It really won't. Okay? So for those of you to whom that prophetic words, word applies, okay, and I feel like there's something else the Holy Ghost wants me to release, so let me release it. For behold, my children, I am a God of finances. I am a God of not only provision, but great provision. I am a God of abundance, and I want to release my abundance upon you. I do not just want you to grow financially. I want you to grow spiritually, mentally, emotionally. I want you to grow into being all that I have called you to be. So this week, prepare for the financial increase. And this week, prepare yourself and be ready on every level. So that as the money begins to flow, you know how to operate according to my will, according to my principles. You know how to operate in the new level of blessing I'm sending you to, that you might accomplish my will and my purpose for the finances. And I will bless you and you shall glorify me and give thanksgiving unto my name and others shall see your blessing and your prosperity and you shall give me the glory for all your increase, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Well, as always, I'm blessed by that. And um, very important there with the Spirit of God was saying that as God begins to increase us and bless us, he wants us to do what he wants us to do. So that's another reason why you have to have a relationship with God. You have to have a walk with God and you have to let the Lord be the Lord over your finances. And I'm going to say this last little piece and I'll be done. One of the things that defeats us in life when it comes to our walk with God is this idea of selfishness or fear. What do I mean by selfishness or fear? It's the idea that God doesn't really want you to have anything. Nothing could be further from the truth, but for Christians in particular, that idea doesn't make any sense, and I'm going to tell you why. It doesn't make any sense, and this is why unbelievers sometimes are slow to convert <laughs> to, to believe in the Christ, because sometimes his children have such crazy ideas. Even a God that loves you so much that he gave you the life of blood of his son, but he won't give you no dollars. It doesn't make any sense for you to say 
that you believe in a Savior, a loving Savior that loved you so much, he was willing to allow himself to be brutally murdered, brutally crucified. I mean, you know, the Lord says, no man takes my life from me, I'll lay it down. So, you know, they didn't take Jesus against his will. He surrendered. He was in control. But I'm saying for him to be brutally nailed to the cross and murdered and slaughtered like a lamb and all the things that happened to the Lord in that exchange. It doesn't make any sense for us to say as believers that we believe in a God and a savior that loves us like that, but won't give you no dollars. Let me ask you a question, those of you that are parents, how much would you give for your children? Is there any amount of money somebody could offer you for your children? That's laughably ridiculous. If you love your kids, your kids are priceless. There's no amount of money. It's, it's, it's stupid. Because when you love your children, you love your children. It, it, it's priceless. You can't put a figure on something like that. Okay? So that means if we as humans, therefore us being humans, have at least that much sense and that much love in our hearts, then how much more than the Holy One, that which is divine, our Father which art in heaven, who loved us so much that he allowed the Son of God to become human and it allowed him to become the sacrifice for sin. And the Son of God was willing to take on human form and come through the womb of a woman and allow himself to be the sacrificial lamb so that humans could be saved. If they love us like that, and then the Spirit of God indwelling us, committing to being with us, even when we don't live holy sometimes. So if they love us like that, how can you say that you believe in, in, a, in a Father God that gives you the lifeblood of his Son and in a loving Savior, the Son of God, that allowed his body to be broken and his blood to be shed, but they won't give you no dollars? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. As the old folks used to say, that don't make a lick of sense. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. I hope that blesses somebody. I hope that just broke something off of you. I hope that, that whatever kind of ridiculous, you know, sideways belief you've been carrying all these years about God and money, I hope what was just spoken broke, uh, broke that off of you because it doesn't make any sense. It's absolutely senseless to say that you believe in a loving God that would sacrifice on that level but somehow withhold cash or anything from you. But the Bible says God gives us richly all things to enjoy. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights. Okay? Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Okay? So that's what I need to do with teaching on finances so I can show you all these scriptures for those of you that don't. Because those are scriptures I just quoted. But the point I'm trying to make is that it doesn't make any sense. And a whole lot of Christian people believe it. Doesn't make any sense. So I hope something just got broke off of you. <laughs> okay? So again, for those of you that can receive what the Lord is saying, receive it and get ready for it and get ready to move the way God wants you to move. Okay? All right. So let me uh, pray a quick uh, uh, closing prayer. Again, I'm not live. So if you have a prayer request, uh, just leave it in the comments on Facebook or Periscope or on Twitter. Just leave it in the comments. And I will address your prayer request because I'm not live right now. I'm uploading this video. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for uh, teaching on finances. Thank you for your prophetic word. Thank you for increased cash flow for those that applies to. Thank you, Father, that you loved us so much to give us the Son. And thank you, O Holy Son of God, that you loved us so much to give us your life. And then thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. And we praise the Holy Spirit for staying with us no matter what. Even we don't, when we don't live the way you want us to live, you stay. Oh, God, Father, you have not withheld that which is most precious to you. And Lord Jesus Christ, you have not withheld that which is most precious to you. And Spirit of God, you have not withheld that which is most precious to you. So we believe you, God, for finances. We believe you love us enough to, to give us finances in abundance. And we want to walk in it, and we want to obey you, and we want to do what you want us to do with the finances and learn how to be faithful at whatever level we're on. Okay? So thank you so much for that, Father, um, uh, believing you, uh, rejoicing, blessing your name, and uh, anticipating your move, looking for you to do great things for us. And we thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen and amen. Well, I was blessed by that. I hope you were blessed by that. Again, like I said, when I can work out my internet issues, I'll be back on live. But at least I can upload a video so we can have the prophetic word. So uh, keep checking my, my Facebook page, my Periscope, and my Twitter because I will upload videos if I can't come on live. And then I will let you know as soon as possible when I am back on live. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless you. Look for that increase this week. And have a great day.